this is the Provoke Prawn. Here to compare the Razer Siren V3 Chroma with the HyperX Quadcast S. Now these are two very similar microphones, at least they're both RGB, so that's probably one of the reasons you're interested in them. If you're a streamer or content creator, these mics can look really great on camera. But they also do a fantastic job of capturing some really high quality audio. So I want to talk about the features and differences between them, my experiences with them, the things that make each of the mics interesting, and how they can be set up and used. As you'll see out of the box, both of them come with their own desk stand, which means that you can use them as default like that, and they are adjustable on those stands so that you can put them in a position where you can be heard. However, as I've shown in the reviews of both of these that I'll link to in the description, this isn't the best way to use them. You will end up with things like keyboard noises, mouse clicks, and other noises in your recordings and in your voiceovers that aren't ideal. Obviously, there's also a risk of bumping the desk stands and knocking the microphone and leading to bad audio that wouldn't be good for either of them. Interestingly, you'll note that the Siren V3 Chroma has a built-in shock mount that isn't visible. You will see the Quadcast S has a very much more visible shock mount system with small straps holding it to its stand. However, I have noted that, as you can see, there is a little bit of wobble in the siren if you're not careful with it, so definitely prefer getting it on a boom arm, which I'll show in a second. The siren V3 Chroma comes with a USB-C cable that plugs into the microphone, and it is essentially plug and play. Both mics are, in that you can plug them in and then you can just get on and use them. But the siren will also work with a 3.5mm headset plugged into the rear with a 3.5mm jack, which means that you can mic monitor through it and you can also listen to audio through there. Now you have hardware controls on the RGB lighting that we've shown you a second, but you can also switch between other things in there, including the gain controls and the volume of the headset as well. So you can adjust that at hardware level. So there's no need to download software with this. However, I will say that it is beneficial to do so because using Razer's sign up software you can customize the lighting much more easily and you can open up streaming possibilities with a mixer for virtual audio interfaces giving you multiple virtual audio tracks and i've gone into a lot more depth on that in the review at hardware level it has a tap to mute functionality on top so you can just touch it and it'll mute and the lighting changes color to let you know when it's muted you can also adjust mm -hmm. Things. So you can press and hold on that mute button to switch into a different mode so that you can then adjust the gain. And there's other controls such as double tapping on it or triple tapping on it. I found them really fiddly and finicky and they don't work very easily. The tap to mute is fine, but trying to switch between the other things, not so much. So it's easier to use the software level controls for that. This mic has a super cardioid pickup pattern, which means that you talk into the front of it and that will then help eliminate sound from surrounding areas. It also on paper has a better capture quality with a 24 bit 96 kilohertz sample rate and also a 16 millimeter capsule. This means that it's designed specifically for streamers and content creators. The sort of persons can be talking directly into the microphone and engaging with their audience or recording voiceovers like I would. And therefore you can't really use it for other things. So for podcasting, or capturing audio from around it, for example, then you wouldn't want to use this microphone. However, you will need to play around with some of the settings in order to get it sounding right, and I've done a video separately on that that I'll link to in the description so you can find out about tweaking it to making it sound good. One of the ways to do that is obviously to get it on a boom arm, and that applies to any of these sorts of microphones. Get it on a boom arm, you can see if you take the stand off on the bottom, there's a thread there for standard boom arm mounting, this is a Rode PSA One Plus as a demo. It will basically just screw into that. And then you've got a microphone that you can then adjust, get closer to you, drop the gain down on it, and eliminate a lot of background noise. Now, the HyperX Quadcast S is one of my favorite USB microphones and has been for a while. It has been around for a bit longer than the Siren V3 Chroma, obviously. And it's popular for a reason. It is quite a bit taller, though, so that's something to bear in mind. At the rear, you'll notice that it has a button that allows you to switch between various different pickup patterns. So you can have stereo, omnidirectional, bidirectional, and cardioid. This gives you more flexibility in how you capture from this microphone. So if you want to use it in the middle of a space, for example, and record around it, you can do that. You can have it record multiple different things at the same time. At the bottom is this soft gain wheel that you can use to adjust the microphone volume, so the pickup levels of the microphone, and that can easily be slid around, 
without making any noise. So it's quite quiet in those sorts of areas, which is nice. Same for the mic mute button on top. It also has USB-C and a 3.5 millimeter jack on it, same as the Siren V3 Chroma. So it's easy plug and play on a variety of devices and it will work nicely on PC without software. Again, though, you can download software for this. HyperX's Ingenuity software can be used to customize it. And you will need to do that to adjust the RGB lighting on this microphone. This mic, like the Siren V3 Chroma, also has its own desk stand, which you can remove it from and put it on a boom arm. You'll notice that the HyperX Quadcast S has those straps on it on its stand. Obviously, that works as a shock mount. It also has a built-in pop filter as well. So it is a little bit better in terms of eliminating some of that sort of knocks and bumps into it. I think the shock mount system on here is superior to the Razer one. I also really like the tap to mute function on top because it has a very soft mute functionality up there. There's no button to press. It's the same sort of logic with Razer. You basically just gently tap it and it mutes the microphone, which means that you don't get a lot of donks in your mic when you're changing settings or when you're muting things. So that's really nice. This is a little bit heftier, but it's fairly easy to mount on a boom arm and it is definitely worth doing. The one thing to note here is the adjustment of it because you obviously want to put it on this boom arm. Then you want to think about the pickup button where you're talking into it, but you can put it in a variety of different angles and still have it sounding great and looking great too. And now for the inevitable mic test. So I'm going to just quickly mute this one and we're going to then start with the chroma so this is the siren v3 chroma obviously it sounds better if you talk into the front of it and because if you go around this way you can see you can't hear quite so well now the chroma effects on this obviously having chroma in the name means it will work with razor's synapse and in the chroma effects so you have a lot of different effects in there. You can loop it in with other Razer products. So if you have Razer mouse and keyboard, you can obviously sync with that, but you can also get it to react to other things. It also has a reactive effect in that you can have it sync like an audio meter. So when you're talking or if you've got game audio playing, you can have the Chroma respond to that as well. I've not got that set at the moment because I've got both mics running in and it's confusing the system, but you can see that you have this effect on it. You can go through static effects and other things. I don't like the lighting on either of them, if I'm honest. Personally, I wouldn't have it, but if you are into an RGB setup, then this is handy. The one thing I do like is the way the lighting changes. Obviously, you can see there's no lighting on this now, so you know it's muted, and the same. Obviously, that goes red, so it's a really good indicator that you're muted, so you know definitely that you're muted. The tap to mute functionality is also fantastic on both of them because you're not pressing a button so you don't have that donk when you go to mute it if you want to mute it at a hardware level. This thing it has a bit more controls I think in Razer's Synapse software because you can open up streaming settings so that you can have um, various different virtual audio channels through this microphone so it's a bit better if you're a streamer that's looking to record multiple audio tracks or to put them out to a stream it's a lot nicer to set up in that way. Also, technically, the capture quality is better and it does a good job of eliminating background audio once you've got it set up correctly. So here's a Razer keyboard in the background. Give you an idea of how much that picks up. And now we'll move over to the Quadcast. The Quadcast is set in its cardioid pickup pattern at the minute, which you can adjust at the rear, obviously, which means then if I talk around this side, same sort of logic. It too has customizable RGB, but it doesn't have reactive effects. It's not quite as flexible. You can tweak zones in HyperX's Ingenuity software, and I would recommend downloading that software for firmware updates and other things. The mute, as you've seen, it's nice and quiet, so same sort of benefit there. It also has really good capture quality, sounds great, and the shock mount system's really good. And it too, once you get it set up correctly, does a good job of eliminating some of that background noise. Now, it's not perfect. There are ways that you can improve both of them. Neither of them have a noise gate, for example, or use software that includes AI noise cancellation and other things. But you can use NVIDIA's broadcast software or other things like that with these to adjust and improve the quality even further. And I've gone into some depth in videos that I'll link to in the description to help you with that if that's something you're interested in. But otherwise, both great choices. 
It really depends what you prefer the look of. I personally prefer the Quadcast S. This thing has a better sample rate, so in theory can capture a better sound quality. But as you can hear, they're both fantastic sounding microphones. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to find out more. Watch the reviews where I go into a bit more depth. And let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.